Uh, this is Elke here today, and I'm gonna share with you some several things that I personally think new traders should be aware. Okay, so for some seasoned traders, what I'm gonna share with you, you, um, you guys might already aware and have been using it for your own advantage and your trading age. Okay, so if if I have been repeating and talking about this, do bear with do bear with me. Okay. So today this section will is designed and specifically for the new traders. Okay, hopefully this all this thing that I'm sharing today would able to help you and also take note of all these small small things around us that are available for us to use and build into our trading age. All right. Okay. So let's start our section for today. Okay. Before I start our section for today. I do, uh, do tag your friends who you think that they are new in the market and they might be interested in this trading, uh, in this topic. Okay, our section you may play back after the section ends, and so if you if any of your friends are not available to watch it right now, you really want to take them along so that able they they will able to play back after our sections. Okay. So first thing, first thing, what things that you think you should take note before you start trading? It can be before you start trading for the day, or even before you open an account, put in your money. What thing that you think you should take note? Okay. So today I'm not gonna discuss everything about it. Okay. Ah, uh, maybe some of you you would say, "Hey, I should take note of what is the brokerage, what is the fees, all this thing." Yes, definitely. All these are some of the basic things that you really want to know. You want to know your trading plan. What kind of thing that you want to do? You want to do short term, long term. Uh, which which broker offer a bad chart? Which broker offer a faster price rate? <laughs> it has okay. Uh, but there are some other things that I think we should know before we start trading in these markets. And these are some things that I personally think that. They can help to smoothen our trading experience and also help us to manage better on our trading. To help to manage our trading better. Okay. So let me introduce myself, guys. My name is Alki. I'm your speaker for today. So personally, I'm in this industry since 2012. I started as a futures dealer with a very reputable Singapore company, and.、Um, In between, I was promoted and invite invited to join a PDT team to do a、uh, audit trading on behalf of the company. Okay, and during that time, that was、uh, the time that I actually undergo、uh, two years training how to trade for the company and how to become a trader. Okay, and that makes who am I today? Okay, and since 2015, I have joined M Plus Online and I have joined from 2015 until right now. So you, you you so you can know how good M Plus is, lah. Okay. <laughs> so for those who haven't opened an account with us, do do uh explore how to open an account with us, lah.、Uh. <laughs> All right. So I've been uh the stock dealer with M Plus online since 2015 and been sharing with uh my clients and also public what I have been learning and what I have been taught when I was PDT. All these skills and all this knowledge. All right. So today. Um, I'm gonna share with you some of the things that are available for you guys to use, especially those beginner traders. And all the information that I'm gonna share with you guys today are mainly for illustration and investor education purposes only. Okay. So what are the topics that I will be talking about? Okay. I'm gonna go with、um, topics about、uh, platform products. Trading and corporations. If we have the time, okay. All right. Let's start with the platform. Okay. Let's start with the platform. May you know how many of you right here today have really played around with the platform, or you just know how to buy and how to sell. Okay. I I think it's very essential for us to know what are the weakness, what are the so called the hidden. Things that inside our platform, so that we can make the best of it. Okay, so 
what I'm going to share with you guys today is some of the features that I think is very essential and very useful for new traders to tap into. Okay, and first of it is good to date. So what is good to date order? Good to date order is actually a repeated order that it will repeat every single day until it match or reach expiry date. All right. So good if you want to um, queue at a lower price to buy some shares, or if you want to queue at a higher price to sell your shares, you might use good to date order too so that it will automatically repeat the order every single day okay rather than every day you keep repeating and inserting the same order over and over again especially if you have a bulk of shares uh, imagine that every day you have to keep the same orders every single day maybe 20 30 orders okay uh, so maybe in the morning you you have to spend 10 30 minutes to do that if you do not know how to use this good to date order. So this good to date order is very, very useful, especially that uh, for those who want to, for a long-term investor, you want to buy at a low price or you want to sell at the higher price, maybe at the resistance. The duration for the good to date order, it can be one month, up to one month from the day where you enter the order. And the expiry date itself, it must be a trading day. It's not only for you to uh, put in buy, buy order and also sell order, but our good two day order is also available for stop limit order. So anytime, if you want to control uh, your dis maintain your discipline, you want to put a very very stress on your discipline. You can always use the good two day on uh, good two day order on the your stop limits and put your stop right over there. So it can work as the, your trailing stops. Anytime the price never go to that that levels, then you might want to sit on along with the trend, and you can keep on moving the stop higher and higher. However, for our good two day order, it will auto cancel whenever there is any copper actions. Okay, because the copper action it will cause the change in the price. Okay, so that's why when we have any copper actions, your good to date will auto cancel and you have to reinsert your good to date order again. Okay, so to know how to use good to date order, do you see the QR code just right beside? Do feel free. Do feel free to. Scan this QR code so that it will lead you to a page of our guideline to see how to insert a good to date order. An example of the good to date order is when you open the order box, click on the validity, and then you can find the good to date right over there. So you can choose until which day you want the order to be. Okay, it will be at the maximum of 30 days from today. Okay, the details from the day that you key in the order. Okay, it's also available on the mobile mobile versions, the mobile apps. Okay, same thing on the validity. You choose good till date GTD, and then it will ask you which are uh, which until which day that you wish the order order valid until. Okay, so whenever you open the um order box, just choose validity, then you will able to find the GTD. Okay, so right now I will share with you how GTD helps. Okay, imagine that today you inserted a sell order. Okay, in front of you there are another seven orders and you are on number eight. Whenever we want to sell sell shares or we want to buy shares, we need to queue. Uh, okay, so this this is the bid price or the offer price, and then the first one queuing, second, third, fourth, fifth. Six, seven, and your you are number eight. Okay, so if there's nothing done, then you will always remain and at the eight until all the seven in front of you, their order are all match. Then only it comes to your turn. Okay, so if any of the all this order or right over here is a very huge order, then it might take quite a while for you to clear 
your clear your uh, to to get to you for your shares to being sold. Okay, especially if you're putting it at the price level such as like uh, ten ringgit or one ringgit, two ringgit, one ringgit fifty cents, two ringgit fifty cents, uh, three ringgit, all this round figure. You know lah, when whenever uh, people they want to place profit thinking levels, they always love to place round numbers. Okay, so many times you see the round figure right over there, it will be a huge a huge number of lots right over there resisting the the upward move. Okay. So if you're using good two day today, okay, how it can help is whenever it comes to the end of the day. Let's say one, two, six, seven, and you yourself, number eight, all five of you guys are good to date order. Okay? And three, four, five, they are day order, they are normal order. Okay? So at the end of the day, three, four, five will be removed because their order expired. And your order as a good to date order, then your queue will become one, two, three, four, five. So the next day when this three, four, five, they queue back into the same price level, they will be behind you already, become six, seven, eight, okay? Then your queue will be at number five. And because our good two day order, we keep the queue inside the Busa server, your queue will remain, okay? So for some of the broker, their good two day order, they are, they are keeping in at their own server their order their, even their good to date order their order will be removed as well so using good to date order it, it doesn't it, uh, it's not only help uh, to, to re reduce the hassle by repeating the order every single day but it also helps you to speed up and also put you at a at the front so that your order can be matched faster okay especially when when there is there, there are moments whereby the price trade to 10 maybe trade trade to 1 ringgit and it just finish half of the queue then start dropping back already so if you're using good today order then maybe you are the first half that your orders are being matched okay so do use good today order to help you okay all right you will get a better queue using good to date order. So for, my, for myself personally, I love good to date order. So whenever my clients ask me to queue some sell order at the high price orders, the first thing that I uh, will ask them is, I help you to do good to date, uh, put up to one mana, okay? Okay, okay, because they will get a better queue, okay? All right, so that will be about the good to date, okay? The next will be the stop limits, okay? Same thing, you can scan this QR code right over here to get the complete guideline from our website about how to place a stop limit order. But what is a stop limit? Stop limit is very useful and most of the time it is being used as to stop out the position when the market go against you, when the market is not in your favor and it helps us to avoid suffering for sudden huge losses okay so when when one guy we know for um for retail traders most of them they cannot stay in front of the market all the time so in the event whereby you really need to be away from the market you cannot watch the market closely you can use stop limit order to put a stop a sell stop limit order so whenever it comes to the price that you wish to stop out it will help you to sell your sell off your position and stop loss and also some of the technical traders they use it to help them to achieve the discipline in trading because we know that discipline is one of the major issue that many they and they are having it's not easy to be disciplined Hence, some of them they use stop limit order to help them to be disciplined. Whenever they, 
whenever they uh, have a position, they know where they want to put up the stop limits. Okay, uh, they want to know where uh, where is their stop loss. They just put the stop limits and force themselves not to change the stop limit and unless it's really necessary. So by doing that, it will help them to stop up the position when the technical reading is no longer in their favor and hit the stop loss. Okay, so that will really help from um, to avoid having a really huge loss when you are unwilling to cut loss. Okay, because whenever um, the position is against you and it goes lower and hit the stop, if you are not willing to stop, the losses might grow to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so it's really essential to maintain the discipline and keep the discipline in trading. And stop limit can help you with that. All right, I just saw Jeff was asking about, can we know the Q order of our Q? Uh, unfortunately, no, we cannot know what is the Q order. But you can briefly guess. You need to manually calculate if you want. Yep. So some of them uh, professionals, they do manual calculations to know where is their order and they they can manage their order whenever it comes near to their order. Okay. So for the stop limit, it is available on both mobile and PC platform as well. And like I mentioned just now, it's available for a good to date as well. So whenever you put a position, you can always put a stop limit order. So even you are away from the markets, it won't. It can help you to stop out if the market goes against you and hit your stop loss. So this is how the stop limit order looks like. Same thing, you pull out a normal order and then you just click at the, at the top right corner right over here and then you're able to choose stop limit. So once you choose the stop limit, you have this stop price to activate it. Then you can put price and stop price. Okay, so what is price and what is stop price? Why there are two prices? Okay, so these are this are the first questions uh, that I always get from my clients when they start learning how to use the stop limit. So let me explain to you what is price and also stop price. Okay, so this is our mobile mobile version or uh, mobile apps. For the stop limit, you can click on the modality right over here and then choose stop limits. Then you can put stop price and also price. First, we start with stop price. What is stop price? Stop price is the trigger price. When the stop price is traded, it will activate the stop limit order. Because when you, whenever you put a stop limit order, the order doesn't go to queue in the market immediately. Okay, it will be very silly. Uh, let's say the market is trading like for Bajaj Corp. The market is trading at 34 and you want to stop loss and sell at 33 cents, for example. So it's impossible when you keep keep the stop limit order, the the system will send in to sell at 33 cents when the market is at 34 because it's below the last trader price. So the stop limit order, it is a slipping order when you are keen when, when you key in the order. So it will be slipping until the stop price is triggered. Once the stop price is triggered, then it will work like alarm train, activate and ask, activate the slipping stop limit order and ask him start to work. Okay, so once the stop price is traded, you will activate the stop limit order and that's, that's, that is the function of the stop price. Then we will focus on the price. Okay. So once the stop limit order is activated, it will become a normal sell order. It, if buy stop limit, then it will be a buy order. Lah. If sell, sell stop limit, it will become a sell order. Okay. Once it's active, activated, it become with a sell order and send into the market to sell based on the price that you entered. Okay. So for example, if you are Let's say like what we are saying, BJ Cup is at 34 cents and then 
we put our stock price at 32 cents and the price at 31 cents okay so whenever the price drops to 32 cents once 32 cents is traded we want to sell at 31 cents okay so if, remember that huh? this is what we want to do whenever the price drops to 32 cents we want to stop out and we sell our stop limit at 31 cents okay so in that scenario okay in that scenario let's say if my stop limit order is 100 lots okay 100 slots of the stop limit order okay uh, 100 lots of stop limit order to sell at 31 cents at that point okay if the volume is 100 lots although I put my price at, at 31 cents the match price will be done at 32 cents because it will give the best buyer the highest bid at that time okay so if the if the lots of the stop limits at 200 lots to sell at 31 cents what will happen is for the first 100 lots it will sell to 32 cents and the next 100 lots it will sell to the next price at 31 and a half cents similarly if my stop limit is 400 lots to sell at 31 cents it will it will do the best one uh, 100 at the 32 cents the 200 at the next uh, best best uh, highest bid at 31 and a half cents the last 100 lots at 31 cents what if it is 800 lots for my stop loss okay so you can see until 31 cents right over here we only has we only have 600 lots so it will match the 100 lots at 32 cents 200 lots at 31 and a half cents 300 lots at 31 cents and remaining 200 lots it will be queuing at 31 cents okay so basically when you are keying when you are keying the stop price when you're keying the stop price uh the the price and the stop price the price and the the price and stop price itself it work like a range okay it work like a range whereby it will sell to whichever best bid price within this range for this case is from 32 all the way until 31 okay this will be good uh if you think that you really want to stop loss maybe you really want to set some buffer right over there maybe one to two cents okay because sometimes you you can definitely set the stop price and price both at 32 cents but in the event when the 32 cents once traded it become the seller then your the your sell order of the 32 cents will be queuing so when the market is dropped very fast very sharply then the price might not return to take your sell order at 32 cents then your on your stop limit order will not be done and keep on queuing at 32 cents despite that the market might go to 30 cents 29 cents 28 cents 27 cents or even lower okay hence in order to have a better functionality and to ensure that you can sell if you really really want to sell really want to stop out you can put the price to be one to two cents below the stock price and it will done based on the best bid among the price and the stock price okay so I hopefully you guys are clear about this okay I can uh, Chow Chow is asking can I put stop limit at 32 cents and price at 33 cents unfortunately no if when you're put, putting a sell stop order the price must be below the stop price okay if you put your stop price at 32 cents your price must be below 32 cents the system won't allow you to place higher all right I do understand where you're coming from because you when when the trigger is set you want to sell at a higher price so because everyone wants to want want to sell higher right okay but the the uh the original idea of stop limit is they want to sell it 
as soon as possible, at the soonest possible. So that's why they limit the price must be below the stock price. So whenever it hits, it will try its best to sell it for you immediately. Okay. This is also the reason why sometimes we see a very fast sharp drop and then rebound because it triggered all the stop orders at one time. Uh, okay. The drop on the uh, trigger the sell stop. All right. Okay. On another hand, besides putting the stop limit as a sell stop, we do also have this thing called buy stop limits. This will be great for those technical traders who want to buy on the breakouts. How the buy stop limit it works is like, for example, is if BJ Corp is trading at thirty four cents, and I read the chart, all this thing, I said, oh, thirty. If it break thirty five. 35 cents, 35 and a half cents. When the breakout happened, wow, the sky is the limit and I want to buy. Okay? If you have that kind of mindset, you want to buy higher at the breakout when the breakout happens because you believe there are much more space that it can go, the momentum is there, then you can consider to use this buy stop limit. Okay? So, how do you put it is the stock price will be have we have to be higher than the last trader price so that the buy stop will only trigger when the price trade higher okay then the price it will be have to be higher than the stop price okay so what uh so whenever the stop or the stop buy stop limit is triggered it will trade at the best offer at the lowest offer possible between the price and also the stop price so in this case is if 35 and a half cents is available at the offer then it will take 30 half and a half cents 35 and a half cents however if the best offer is 36 cents then it will straight away take 36 cents okay if beyond 36 cents then your order will be queuing to buy at 36 cents Sean um, yes, this is actually this thing right here at the right hand side right here. This is our interface on our, the mobile apps. So when you pull out the mobile apps buy and sell buy and sell window, you just change the modality to stop limit, then you can start using it already. Okay, if you are not comfortable or if you want to try but you're afraid to try it, what you can do is you can you can put maybe one or two lots you put the stock price for buying you put the stock price far away a little bit from the last trader price and then the price to be higher if sell then you put the stock price below the last trade price and then the price to be the same as the stock price or just one cent below okay try it with a very with one two lots suppose when you key in it will be uh, working and queuing right over there okay or you can always refer back to our refer back to our the our video right here or the QR code right over here this QR code right over here it will lead you to our PDF uh, guideline okay all right so Jeff is asking what is the difference between limit and stop limit order basically limit order is normal order Normal order that you put a price to queue or to buy immediately. Normal order is limit order. Stop limit order is the is what I'm sharing with you guys right now. Okay, it help you to either to uh, sell lower when the price uh, goes lower or buy higher when the price buy uh, goes higher. Okay, I'm really all right. So basically, uh, limit is normal order lah. Stop limit is the stop uh stop loss order. Okay. Alright, so some things to take note is the for sell stop limit I have been repeating the stop price have to be below than the market price and the price have to be equal or below than the stop price. For the buy stop limit is the stop price have to be above the last trade price while the price have to be greater or equals to the stock price and the third question okay the third one is Nick what Nicholas is asking right now 
why can't we place both stop limit order together with the take profit sell order okay so either only um, normal sell order or sell stop limit order you can place either one at, at the same time you cannot place both okay at this moment the platform do not allow you to put a normal sell order and also put a sell stop limit order this is to avoid both of that in a very volatile market situation both order being matched at the same time then you will be double selling okay but that is for now our company do have the plan to go into a new order called OCO one cancel another so when that implements when that implement then whenever your normal sell order profit taking orders sell um profit taking sell order is matched then it will automatically cancel your stop limit order or vice versa when your sell stop loss limit order is triggered then it will cancel your normal sell order for profit taking so one will cancel another oco order and we do plan for that and we know many people they want it uh, just that we know that the market is very hot since last year and we have been doing our best to maintain the best uh, best stability and efficiency for the platform and ensure everyone can trade smoothly we are doing our best on that moment of time so we do have the plan for OCO and do look forward for that okay it will be out it's just a matter of time okay so for um i hope i do answer you nicholas and stick with us stay with us and very soon you will be able to see oco okay all right so we have done with the platform gtd and stop limit orders i think for especially for new traders these are these are something that you can be benefit from it okay it can help you to smoothen your trading experience and also save a lot of of your time or help you to maintain discipline or help you to get your order filled earlier okay next i would like to talk a little bit about trading hours okay yep trading hours uh, maybe some of you guys will ask, will ask hey okay what to talk about trading hours nine to five lah what else talk <laughs> okay so the trading hours is slightly a little bit more than nine to five yes the market opened at 9, that's the morning section, that's the start uh, where all the trading starts and it ends at 5 o'clock, okay? But besides 9 to 5, they are also are the timeline that we might want to be aware of. The very first is the pre-opening time, okay? Actually, from 8.30 a.m. onwards, you can start keying order and the order will start flowing into the market for the Busa Gateway, okay? So if you want to uh, get your order go in and match at the at the at the at the, uh, at the earliest possible at the at the uh, front queue then you might really want to try to get your order to go in at 8 30 because that is that is when all the orders start queuing okay and then 12 30 we have the lunch break okay 2 p.m will be the afternoon pre-opening and that will determine our afternoon opening price and 2.30 is the official, the starting of the trading sections until 4.45 alright from 4.45 until 4.50 there will be a 5 minutes 5 minutes sections to determine the closing price and from 5.50 pm onwards the market will only trade at the closing price and that one we call as trading at last section okay for the last 10 minutes of the market from 4.50 to 5 p.m okay so this is how we look it as the complete trading hours for klsc so we have been talking about pre-opening uh pre-opening for the morning pre-opening for the uh, afternoon section and also pre-closing at 4.45 p.m. So what's so special about uh, this pre-opening and pre-closing? All right. Okay, so let's look at these two code right over here. 
Okay. Uh, for this to go right over here, you can see that despite for A Asia, first we look at A Asia first. Despite that A Asia was trading, the last trade price is eight ringgit thirty five cents. Eh? How come the bid right over here is 80, 85 cents, eighty four cents, and the sell is seventy five and half, and then 17, 79 and half. So some of some of the new traders they will be asking, eh, hey, okay. Uh, the system like got some problem uh. The bid and ask very weird uh. Very funny uh. Uh, How come it's like that? Okay, So generally when you see something like this You can check with your clock And most of the time it is during the Pre-opening or pre-closing se session This is the time when the market try to uh, Find the equi equilibrium price The the, the middle price of the bid and the uh, bid and the offer, bid and the ask, best buy and the best sell, to find what is the middle price and open at that price. Or okay, so for Asia, a very simple way to look look for how to calculate it is you can look at the TO, which stands for theoretical opening. All right, okay. So how do they determine? How do they determine what is the opening or the closing price? They will match based on the number of lots right over here, the number of lots for the buyer and the number of lots of the seller. Okay. So from on the A Asia code, on the A Asia fast code, we can see at this point of time they are eight thousand two hundred and ten order. Q, who wish to buy A Asia at 85 cents okay meanwhile if we look at the sell, the selling the 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 us okay if we look at the best sell even if we take all the five layers right over here all the way until 83 and a half cents it's not even 2000 lots queuing to sell okay so at this point of time we can see that the Bid is overly is is totally overwhelmed and overshadowed the whole the, the number of sell right over here. Okay, so if this eighty five cents sapu all this right over here, then it will have remaining lots still queuing at eighty five cents. Then the market is determined to open at eighty five cents. Okay, uh. A uh, easier version to look at is we can look at MMC Corp right over here at the bottom. You can see MMC Corp right over here. Here the theoretical opening is at one ring, give fifteen cents. Okay, one ring, fifteen cents. So for MMC Corp, if we look at one ring, give fifteen cents, we can see the bit, the bit part, the best buy, the one ring, give fifteen cents is on the uh, first, second, third, third layer of the bit, the best buy. While for the best sell is at the fourth layer of the best sell. Okay, so if we add up until one ring fifteen cents, they are a total somewhere around uh six hundred forty lots. Q wanted wanted to buy at one ring fifteen cents, six hundred forty forty lots. Okay, so if we we use the six hundred forty lots to take on the sell, okay. It will clear the one ringgit 06, one ringgit 11, one ringgit 12, but it, it won't be able to clear one ringgit 15 cents. Okay, you will not able to clear one ringgit 15 cents. Okay, so all the number of lots right over here, okay, number of lots right over here, it will only able to finish all these sell orders until one ringgit 15 cents. Hence, the match price, the opening price is at one ringgit fifteen cents. Okay. So if you look at the fast codes, the TO price it will actually determine which is the price that the buyer and seller will match each other. Okay. So for MMC Corp, it is one ringgit fifteen cents. Okay. All right. So I can see there are some questions from David and also um, uh, Leung, uh, Miss Ong, I believe, or Mr. Ong. Okay, He Leung. Okay, all right. 
let's look at the question. Okay, what is the difference between TO and open price? TO is theoretical opening. The TO it will change. Okay, remember just now we said in in a day within a day there are how many session of pre opening? There will be morning at nine o'clock opening opening one time pre opening session for the afternoon two to two thirty p.m. and then the last pre closing at four forty five to four fifty p.m. So for every single time, every for each time right over here, the pre sections, opening of the pre closing sections, the TO will change, ref, uh, referring to the changes of the QR over here. So the TO theoretical opening is the theoretical opening for the first section, the theoretical opening of the second section, the theoretical opening for the last trading and last session. Okay, the pre closing session. All right, so the TO it will change at nine o'clock at two thirty p.m. and also four fifty p.m. TO will change based on the Q. All right, so for open price, it indicates the opening price of the day, the traded price at nine a.m. Okay, this is the traded price of the nine a.m. So in the morning, in the morning you see TO and open price for nine o'clock, it will be the same. But during afternoon 2.30 p.m., the TO, it can be different from the opening price or at 4.50 p.m., the TO will be different from the open price as well. Okay. And the max Q that we can see is only 5 rows. Unfortunately, it's only 5 rows. So at, for AHA right over here, we cannot see beyond 83 and a half. Hence, what we can rely on, we can only rely on 80, uh, the TO right over here, 85 cents. Yes, Jeffrey, you can key in the order in the midnight, but the order will still pending uh, to send to the Busa Gateway because the Busa Gateway is not open. And only the Busa Gateway open at 8.30, then the order will be, send, will be sending in. Okay. Uh... All right, all right, okay. Uh, Jeff is asking what is the plus N? Okay, I believe it's the plus 70 or minus 1,120 or this, right? Or plus 10. It means the changes, the changes of the number of lots. So previously it is uh, 14, 1483. There are one order add in to add to buy another 10 lots at 83 cents. Then it becomes 14 and 93. That the changes of the of the queue. Yes, Jasmine, you are more than welcome to watch the video again. The video is able to play back after our session ends. You can find it in our YouTube channel. Yep, you can find it in our YouTube channel or you can play, uh, play it from our Facebook video sessions. Okay, so if you have any friends who think that all this information is very useful to them, do take them and also encourage them to watch. Of course, Encourage them to like and follow us will be even better. Okay, that's my KPI. Yeah. Okay, really appreciate if you guys can help me on that. All right. So the theoretical opening price, like I said just now, is at 9, 2, 9 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and also 4.50 p.m. And the very tricky part about TO, it will change based on the buy and sell queue until the very, very last seconds, until the opening. Okay, so anytime it can change. And if you see the TO, the theoretical opening right of that is dash, then it means that there is no and uh, there's no matching order, and it will base the it will base on the last price. Okay, uh, the matching order upon opening will be in purple color. All right, so I'm gonna talk a bit on this. So normally when you are trading, you will see uh, the volume is in red or is in green. So green it means uh, green is it means the buyer straight away take the seller the, the offer right over there the best sell the someone who straight away bought from the best sell when it's red meaning there is a seller straight away sell to someone who is queuing at the best buy okay meanwhile sometimes you do see purple color at the volume side and especially you will see it upon the market opening like 9 a.m. 2.30 p.m. and 4.50 p.m. 
if you want to see I can show you right over here okay so if you have time you can go to the trade details choose any any stocks okay this stuff right over here and then you scroll to the time okay you scroll to the time okay so you can see all these are purple okay some of you guys will say it's pink uh, uh, and I see it is as uh, the color is purple color lah. you know sometimes men and women they see color differently <laughs> okay that's the uh, the different biological build up for men and women okay so uh, then we scroll all the way to 2 30 p.m okay scroll all the way down to 2 30 p.m you can see the 2 30 p.m is also in purple color okay it's also in purple color so you can see they indicate it as opening trade as well all right uh so for the purple color it is in purple color because the system are not able to determine whether it's the uh, buyer to seller or seller to buyer okay so for opening it is a match price it opened at the agreed price so that's why it is in purple color okay so uh what i was saying just now at 4 4 4 50 pm the teal price is the closing price is the trading at last price if there is no teal price at 4 50 pm that you based on the last trader price okay so basically on your platform you can find the teal price right over here and you can see all this dash one is uh they do not have any matching price okay so before i move forward to an, the next section one trick that i would like to share with you guys about the teal okay let's look at mmc cop right over here okay let's look at mmc cop all right okay uh mmc cop imagine this is the opening of the mmc cop and you mmc cop announced some good re very good result okay announced some very good result and you definitely want to buy mmc cop at the opening price at warning 15 cents you think ah uh, uh, just three cents uh, just three cents higher is cheap I believe the the market can go uh, five to ten cents for example uh, only example uh, don't go and buy MC cup tomorrow uh, for this uh, okay just for example okay if you um, let's say if you really want uh, for example you really want to buy you think that it's cheap and you want to buy at the opening price one thing that you can do is you can utilize the theoretical opening queue right over here and then cut queue okay so how, how to cut queue okay how to cut queue just imagine uh, imagine imagine if one ringgit 15 cents right over here okay right over here uh it's 2000 2000 units 2000 units at one ringgit 15 cents okay so if you put to Q to buy at one ringgit fifteen cents, you will be queuing behind the two thousand units of the best buy. For example, okay, uh, you'll be queuing behind. While there is not even two thousand lots queuing to sell at one ringgit fifteen cents and below. So if you're queuing, if you're putting normal to buy at one ringgit fifteen cents at this time, then you will be queuing behind and. During the market open, your order will be queuing to buy. It won't match at the opening. So one thing that you can do is you can cut queue. You can put to buy at higher price. For example, one ringgit sixteen cents, seventeen cents, or eighteen cents. Okay. So if the tier price didn't change, the mark what you will get is you will your order will get match earlier than all these people that queue and queuing at one ring 15 cents because you queue higher than them okay at the teal price okay so this is what we call as cut queue okay so if you cut queue if you think that you want to buy at the market opening price you can queue higher than the teal price and if the teal price didn't change and the market open at teal price then you will get to buy at the teal price despite that you queue higher okay similarly if you want to sell your shares okay if you want to sell your shares and you think the price is a good price that you want to sell and you don't want to queue 
behind them, you can queue lower below the TO price, the, maybe one bit below the TO price, then you can cut queue to sell earlier. Okay, so when the price didn't change and the, it opened at the TO price, then your sell order will be matched at the TO despite that you place the price uh, place at a lower price. Okay, so that is the trick for cutting the queue based on the TO. Okay, so if you are confused, do play back the video <laughs> or if we have the the Chinese called Yuan Fen to meet up, then I can explain to you personally or you can call me lah, okay? <laughs> or you can call ring up our uh, uh, support team or our dealers to us, okay? All our dealers are capable and they will be able to answer you the questions. All right, okay. Uh, Kim Boon, just now we uh, mentioned, we already explained why there is a purple color and uh, whenever it's open at nine o'clock, 9 o'clock, 2.30 p.m. It will be, it is opening price. It is the opening of the market. One, 9 a.m. is the opening for the first section. 2.30 p.m. is the opening for the second section. Okay. Uh, 4.50 p, 4.50 p.m. It is the uh, theoretical closing price. Yes, yes, Alan. Yep. So the TO price, at 4 uh, 4.50 p.m. it will tell you what is the closing price okay next we'll go move to the sentiment we'll move to the market sentiment as a new traders I think it's very important to know how to gauge the market sentiment one way to gauge market sentiment that I often use uh, that I always use is I will look at the gainer and decliners so for those who have been attending to my weekly Monday uh, sharing sessions, Monday market outlook at 12.30 p.m. every Monday, you will know that the very first thing that I always mention is look at the gainers and decliners because that will tell me what is the sentiment for the day, whether the um, gainers, they are overpowered or decliners are actually overshadowed the markets. So for today, if we look at today, we can see Today is the bear market whereby there are 865 decliners while we only have 288 counters going up. And out of these 288, some of them they might be structural warrants all this. Okay, so the counters that actually move higher are even lesser. So you can see today is definitely a bearish day whereby most of the counters they are coming down. Okay, so besides looking looking from here. What are the things that we can, um, whenever you look at the um, the number of uh, gainers and decliners, you can look at uh, the numbers. If if the buy, the gainers and decliners, they are pretty much the same. Like one is 300 plus, 400 plus, and no one is also 300 plus, 400 plus, then the market could be moving on sideways. If you look at uh, on Monday market, Tuesday market, when we are waiting for the announcement on of MCO, the MCO rumors is going uh, all over the place. You can see the market is pretty much on sideway, and the gainer and decliners they are pretty much the same. Okay, not much movement. But once we see maybe somewhere around six hundred plus, the market is more skewed towards bearish, and 900, 1000 is the market is a little bit overly overly bearish. It's too bearish at that time. Okay, everyone is selling. All right. So when the market is overly bearish, not to say the market definitely will rebound, but for value investor, it can be a good time for you to look into the market whether there are any good opportunity for bargain hunting. Okay. Uh, so maybe you can shopping and look for some cheap stocks when the market is overly bearish or the, when the market is overly bullish sometimes the bullish can sustain longer okay compared to the bearish all right so that is the behavior of the stocks markets so when the market is overly bullish if you want to sell don't sell everything maybe sell partial bit by bit okay to take profit if you think that the shares is really overvalued already okay uh, but when the market is overly bearish then you need to take note that the market is on a bearish route 
and that might sustain and it it will be a very good scenario a good time for scalping okay because they it will attract more and more traders to come in when the market is going on the bull run okay besides the gainers and decliners another thing that you can look into is the listing so how do you pull out the listing is you go under indexes and then you choose listing from there you can see what is the performance for all the sectors over here all right so you can see from the table if you pull, put all the all the all the figures definitely we can see what happened today is healthcare actually dragged down the market the healthcare dropped by 3.92 percent uh, while who are the one that is positive in the market for today we can see it is actually from plantation and also transportation so this is very crucial actually especially when you are trading since the morning market if you have been monitoring listing const uh, constantly whenever uh, when the market is bearish and start recovering like what happened today you were able to spot what are the sectors that is moving and very quickly you can look into the counters in those sector then you can do some trading you can capture some of the rebounding stocks and also trades along with the rebound of the markets okay for example today is the plantation and also the transportation let's look at some stocks of the plantations one of them is klk okay so we talk about the overall market the the gainers decliners then we talk about the in uh how to look at what are sectors that are rebounding and right now we look into the gainers uh the stocks itself one thing that you can look into is the b percentage which is the buy rate so what does this 62 percent buy rate it means it means that out of the transactions 62 percent of the transaction is buying meaning they are taking the sell the best sell which is queue to sell people are buying okay while only 38 percent they are giving they are sell they are selling to the uh, best buying okay they are more people they are more people buying okay so when you when you can see okay uh the plantation is on the rebound klk okay the buy rate is good then we want to look at the chart so you can look at the chart for klk wines you can see klk is a very overlapping chart all right and it is rebounding from the support at near the 21 ringgit okay hence you can see whether you are are you a bottom fishing kind of traders or if you want to trade along with the trend if you want to trade along with the trend it has to be above the 200 days moving average then you might don't want to take on this trade then you can move on to another plantation counters like for example JTSL which give you a 62% buy rate as well okay uh, so 62% is very good as well because only 38% of the trades they are selling to the best buy and if we look at the chart we can see the price has formed the bottom and rebounding above the 200 moving average uh, and we can see uh, 84 cents is the immediate resistance and after that we do have somewhere around 90 92 cents and also one ringgit levels okay for the upside okay so this is how you can identify the sentiments from the overall market to the sector itself what are sectors that are moving rebounding and also or, and also what is the sentiment is in individual stocks okay all right uh okay nicholas uh okay nicholas for your question about the technical issue you might want to call our technical support to help okay our customer support service at one three hundred two two one two three three okay you can try to call them and they might they will be able to advise you how to deal with it okay 
unfortunately, TO right now cannot view through our mobile apps. All right. Even you download the mobile apps on the tablet, it's also still uh, mobile apps. We are also we also have been receiving feedback on this, and we are looking into this issue. At this point of time, it's only available through the uh, PC platform. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, Kinbun asking about uh, in the middle of the trading hours there is a purple 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 volume indicated. Okay. Uh, that could be uh. That, that can be uh, trading outside uh, DBT, which is done outside of the market, okay, whereby the market un unable to identify whether it's, uh, it's a buyer or seller. So whenever the system cannot identify whether the transaction is a buyer or seller, because it can be a DBT, a direct business transaction, then it will identify as the, as the, as purple color okay and jeff uh, the this the listing it will be in rules by what what uh like what it display right over here okay um because i was i was afraid that you guys cannot see clearly because uh the word is a little bit too small so that's why i built it into a bar chart for you guys okay <laughs> uh this is done manually on uh the slides okay uh, so what you will see on the listing will be like this. It will even indicate for you how many counters up, how many counters down in that list, uh, in that listing. And you can actually uh, look look out for the stocks inside all this listing through our platform as well. Okay, what you need to do is you just go under stocks. Uh, sorry, you just go under uh, go on, under here, search for sector. And then you can look for all this, all this different uh, sector that you wish to look at. Okay, we can see uh, transport and logistics was doing very well. Then you can select transport and logistics. So you can see all from here, and then click the change to see what are the counters that is moving higher for uh, the logistics sector. So you can see Maybau, MISC, Westport, Tasco, all this. Okay. Uh, Kimbun, okay, for the account summary, because our system maintenance all this is done during the midnight, okay, uh, you might want to refer it uh, in the morning for a more accurate reading. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, the bar chart format, uh, uh, I think it will be a little bit hard because because actually, it's, if you look at it on the listing, it's actually quite comfortable to look at it lah, because when you click on it, you can see the the whole row of the information, how many counters up, down. Uh, you get more info rather than the budget itself. All right, the budget is only just looks nice lah, I would say. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a little bit more. So let's finish up uh, our section today. Okay, so the very last part, for our session today will be the high risk products. Okay, so the very last part of today's session, I want to highlight a little bit on all these high, high risk products, which I think, uh, especially for beginners, these are something that you would you guys want to be aware of. Okay, uh, one of them is warrants, and another one that I would like to highlight later on will be rights. Okay, I forgot to include rights, so I will just use the platform to share with you guys about rights. Okay, but let's look at the warrant first. Okay, I believe you, uh, many of you guys heard um, warrants or you guys traded warrants before. Okay, so basically warrants itself is a leverage product. Okay, uh, it, it gives a higher risk and of course a higher return as well. So for example, mean whole right over here, when the mother share price is going higher, the warren is also tends to go higher as well. Okay, they, most of the time they are moving in line. But when you invest on mean whole, you can see the changes, it gives you a 19% return while the warren see it can give you up to 50% returns. Okay, so warrants give you a higher return. But of course, when the thing go against you, it will give you a high risk as well. So do aware of that, right? So when you're trade, if you are trading warrants or if you 
really want to know warrants is something some aspect that you really want to know about warrants is warrants it has a maturity okay warrants there are two types one is company warrants and one is structure warrants okay in comparison to structure warrants company warrants have a longer maturity and it is issued by the company and only company warrants can convert to become mother share structure warrants can never convert to become a mother share okay so you need to be really alert about this so to how to identify company warrants company warrants you can see company warrants you just double it okay w w is the warrants so whenever you see w start with w it is the company warrants like minho is wc uh why wc why sometimes you see wa why sometimes you see wb and why minho is wc is because previously it has the uh, wa uh warrants a warrants b which is already expired and right now we have warrants c the third warrants okay so after warrants c gone and if they give a, a new warrant again then it will be wd we all this okay and so on all right so for structure warrant wise as mentioned just now it has a shorter maturity normally company warrants is three years five years three years five years or i think i seen seven seven years before okay but right now most of the time is three years and five years while the uh structure warrants it can be as short as six months okay so structure warrants has a very much shorter maturity and it is issued by investment bank all okay, right structure warrants is not issued by the company but it is issued by investment bank as a trading is as a leverage trading tools okay remember structure warrants is only for short-term trading don't hold it because it is non-convertible you cannot convert it become mother share but it is only for cash settlement okay so what you can how you can do is what you can do is you can um, right click on the warrants and then choose generate info okay so when you choose general info it will come to this page whereby you can find your warrants info right over here okay so if you want to convert your company warrant what what price you need to convert is you need to refer to the exercise price okay you will have to uh, look at the exercise price and there uh, for for example minho warrant if you want to convert minho warrant to to mother share it is 32 cents per warrants okay and the conversion ratio is one to one so for every single uh, warrants fee that you pay and convert at 32 cents it will convert into a one mother share okay uh, so besides that you also want to take take note of the maturity date so for warrants C minho warrants C the maturity date is actually getting really near in August all right uh, then the premium I'm not gonna discuss how to calculate the premium today otherwise it's gonna take uh, quite quite some time all right so I will leave it for um, next time if we have any warrants action okay uh, so you can see the warranty has been listed since 2016 and all the way until right now so it's a five years maturity term warrant okay uh, imagine if you trade the warren and then you look for investing uh you can see how 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 much the price has been dropping uh across uh the five years okay so if you are trading warrants i would advise to trade it for trading purposes short-term trading purposes okay uh, but structure warrant you definitely want to trade on short-term only okay uh, very similarly uh, for structure warrants, you want to know where is the exercise price, whether is it uh, too far away from the uh, mother share price, uh, uh, which that will affect the sensitivity of the structure warrants. Okay, so maybe you want to trade those that is uh, nearer to the exercise price, and also maturity date is very very important if you are looking at the structure warrants. Okay, uh, if the maturity date left 
less than 50 days 40 days or even especially those which is at one one or two days seriously don't touch those structure warrant that left with one to two days okay uh, especially if it is out of money the mother share price is below the exercise price don't touch it okay because structure warrant is not com is not convertible you cannot convert into a mother and if the mother share price is below the exercise price upon the maturity then the structure warrant is considered as worthless uh, considered as burn okay so do know what you're trading okay do all your research know what is the what is the instrument that you are trading R really know about that then only you start trading it okay otherwise uh, even warrant give a, a great returns but it also give a fairly high risk as well okay so you can see for the top of c1k is actually just listed not too long ago on 31st match uh march from four four and a half cents it went as high as almost nine cents and recently it dropped these two days it went all the way back to five and a half cents okay so you need to know the risk you can see the reward is really good from four four uh four and a half cents to almost nine cents almost a double but within two days it can drop from eight and a half cents all the way to uh, five and a half cents okay that's a very drastic drop as well uh, along with the drop in the glove counters okay so do take note on all of this and do your research uh, and study accordingly okay uh, so one thing that when whenever you're trading the warrants the mother share uh, the company warrants or the structure warrants one thing that you really want to um, take note is whenever the warrants regardless is company warrants or the structure warrants when it comes really near to the expiry and the mother price is below the exercise price try to avoid it uh, because due to this theory called time decay okay time decay uh, which gonna drop really fast when it comes near to the expiration okay because the price of the warrants it consists of intrinsic value and also time value so when the price is below the the mother share price is below the exercise price and it comes really near to the expiry the time value will drop very fast and you can see the warrant price drop really really fast okay all right so this is one thing that you really want to take note if you are trading the company warrants or the structure warrants okay all right so uh before we end the section today just like i was mentioning that we want to talk another thing called or okay uh recently okay or orpr okay so there is or there is pr in the market um, sometimes they have wr which is warrant rights okay or is ordinary rights the uh ordinary share rights pr is preference share rights wr is war uh warren rights okay so or pr and wr all these rights share they have a very very short validity okay if you do not intend to subscribe the rights issue okay and you have the or pr wr do sell them before the expiry okay and if you if you want to trade for short term let it be short term not don't choose all this or pr and wr to trade okay otherwise if you buy into this or pr and then uh it has uh, reached the expiry it's either you subscribe it you pay the you pay the issue price to subscribe them into mother share or it's just gonna burn okay so how to know when is the last date for all this orpr is you can go to uh company announcement okay go to company announcement okay so you can see all these rights okay and then there is one thing called important relevant date for renounceable rights so click right here okay so you can see when the rights start trading okay april 26 and the last day of trading 
okay the last day of trading is on 5th of March it ends on 4th of or fourth of May okay the very last day to trade is on 3rd of May okay so this is how you can find when all this ORPR is gonna expire okay of course if you forget you can always play back the video or you can always ring our dealers okay we are more than willing to help you all right okay so that will uh, that will complete the very last part of our session today